Hi everyone, Carl Schuf here from Greensock. Today I want to talk to you about some workflow issues relating to CSS animations. At Greensock, we often discuss browser compatibility, lack of control, and other shortcomings of CSS animations, but after seeing lots of super basic examples of CSS animations, I've been curious how folks use them for more elaborate projects. After experimenting with them shortly, I found them extremely difficult to work with, especially when building animations that tell a story, like the one you see here. You know, perhaps if you need two or three UI elements to slide and fade into view, CSS animations may be suitable. To better understand how people work with CSS animations, I took a stab at creating an animation that would be trivial using GSAP. Let's take a look at this car animation, and it runs for only a mere seven seconds. You know, there are plenty of times you need to synchronize the animation of multiple objects as shown here. You don't want the lift going up before the car gets to it, nor do you want the car and lift going down while the mechanics are still under it. Come on guys, get out of the way! As an animator, I find the percentage-based timing of CSS animations to be awkward on a conceptual level. Animators think in terms of seconds. We say things like, oh, that should be half a second longer. Not, can you try making this effect 20% of the total duration? But even beyond this conceptual dilemma, they create a real hindrance to a smooth workflow. Or at least that's what I found. Soon I will illustrate the problems I had when I tried to synchronize two extremely basic animations. But before we get into it though, I just want to make a few things clear. I'm no expert in CSS animations, but my position is that doing something this basic shouldn't require advanced techniques. I did search quite a bit, but it seemed that beyond tutorials that show how to make a single item move or rotate, lots of folks recommended JavaScript CSS hybrid approaches, which just seemed a bit much for the very simple task I'm trying to accomplish here. And lastly, I'm really interested in feedback. If I'm doing something totally off base, hey, let me know. I'm very interested in seeing what options are out there. Keep in mind that the theme of this series is not just about if something is possible using CSS. We're ultimately focused on how practical it is. Do the solutions involve lots of code? Do they scale well? Do you have to be an expert to work with this stuff effectively? All right, let's get to our first demo. In this file, you'll see that we have some animations running. We're moving the blue square and the red square at the same time. Uh, my first challenge is going to be that I want the blue square to not start animating until the red square hits the bottom. So that shouldn't be rocket science. So let's take a look at what I have here. I have my red animation set up where its duration is going to be five seconds. And at 70% of the way through this animation, the top of the square will be 250. So that's the point where the red square is at the bottom here. So in order to delay the blue animation until we reach 70% of the red animation, I need to figure out in seconds what's 70% of 5. So what I'm going to do is open up my handy calculator here, and I'm just going to take 5 seconds and multiply by 0.7, which is going to give me 70% of 5, which is 3.5. So what I'm going to do is just make a little comment note here of saying that at 70% we're at 3.5 seconds because I'm going to want to remember that. So now you'll see both animations start at the same time. I'm simply going to tell my blue animation to start at 3.5 3 seconds, hit run, and now you'll see okay the blue guy's hanging out there and then boom as soon as we hit the bottom he starts moving across the screen. Alright so for something this simple I only have to use a calculator once. But let's move on. Let's say that I don't want any delay on the blue animation, okay? It's going to start at the same time the red animation starts, but this time, as soon as the red square hits the bottom, I want to start changing the color of the blue square to green. So, what do we know? We know that at a time of 3.5 seconds is when the red square is at the bottom. Now, in my blue animation, I need to figure out when are we going to hit 3.5 seconds what percentage of 6 seconds is 3.5 seconds? I don't know. Let's open up my calculator and I'm going to do 3.5 times 100 divided by 6. Oh, isn't that a lovely number? 58.33333333366. So what we're going to do is this. At a time of, I'm sorry, a percentage of 58.33 percent we're going to specify my background color is blue and then a little bit later on oh don't you think 60 percent is a fine number yes i do 
dun, dun, dun. excuse me there we go let's set the background color to green okay I'm gonna hit run and now keep an eye on the blue guy and the red guy hits the bottom and we turn to green oh snookies we turn back to blue again well at 100 percent why don't we just keep adding some more redundant code background color green we'll keep it that way so we'll hit run from the get-go and you'll see that when the red square hits the bottom the blue square turns green so i had to use pretty much a calculator twice to do this and I had to specify a background color three times, and I had to use a horrible number like 58.33%. No human being is gonna look at that and know exactly at what time that happens. And now just suppose our art director or client says, you know what, I like that fade to green you did real well, but you know what, I want it to take one second. I feel like it's happening too quickly now. Well, okay, if I want the change in color to only take one second, all I got to do is figure out is, oh, well, what percentage of six seconds is one second? Guys, I'll spare you my calculator. It's 16.66666. So now what I have to do is take 58.33 and simply add 16.66 to get the number where the green part of the animation should be finished. So obviously changing any of the timing here is going to be a nightmare. But even worse, what if the client says, oh, you know what? The red box should fall quicker. Well, then we would want to reach this top of 250 at a lesser percent. So if we change this down to, say, 30%, well, you know what? We then have to figure out, well, what time in seconds is 30% of 5? And then we have to convert that value to percentages of 6 seconds, and then I have to change all these numbers again. So for something so simple, I'm just overwhelmed with the complication let alone to change the background color from one value to another, I seem to be setting the background color three times. So for this simple WebKit only animation, I have, I don't know what, 16 lines of code or so. And just to show you where I'm a little bit flustered is because doing this with an animation tool like GSAP, it's really easy. I have four lines of code. I'm not dealing with vendor prefixes. And when I need to make changes to the animation, it's, it's not a nightmare that requires a calculator. Um, so for instance, let's just say that the client says that, you know what, the uh, fade to green is happening. Boom, way too quick. Make it one second. Oh, well, why don't I just change this number to one? Voila, hit run. And you'll see as soon as the red box hits the bottom, Okay, I have my nice one second fade there. Oh, the other use case was what if the box should fall quicker? Well, instead of taking 3.5 seconds, I'm gonna say let's take, you know, uh, one second. So I make this one change in one place, and now watch what happens. I don't have to change a zillion other things. As soon as the box at the bottom, it started turning green, the blue box. So the point here is not to show you or teach you the GreenSock API, but to show you that, hey, you know what? In four lines of code, I have infinitely more flexibility and, quite honestly, sanity. And, you know, my point is, if aligning the events in two separate animations for something this simple caused this much headache, you know, what's going to happen when we start building more complicated sequences? Just so you know, I did build a stripped-down version of the car animation with CSS, and it took me 70 lines of code. Doing the same thing with GSAP, you know, only took about a dozen. So stay tuned for part two, folks. We're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison of building the same animation with GSAP and CSS. And I really think you're going to be surprised at the conveniences that GSAP offers. Thanks for watching, guys.